Hello and welcome to the next tutorial in my Inventor Tips and Tricks playlist. This one is how to make a flashing flange. What? What's that you say? How to make a flashing flange? You heard it here first. What you do is you go to view, you enable realistic visual settings, switch on shadows, enable ray tracing, disable ray tracing and your flanges will flash. Really no idea what's going on with that but you saw it here first. Right, no, this video is all about this little gadget here. This is called the marking menu. It came into Inventor in around about, I think it was released 2012 I want to say, so you know the year 2011. So it's been around for a good three years and sadly to my dismay, Today, one of my engineering draftsmen came to me and said, how do I switch it off? And I was like, dude, really? You've, three years later, you've still not got used to it? Apparently not. And he was like, how do I switch it off? And I was like, do you really want to? Yes, I want it off. I was like, it's, it's useful. No, off. Right, okay. And it sort of, it spawned the idea to create this video. Right, what is the marking menu? Well, basically, it was Autodesk's idea to play them. That, that, that flashing's getting on my nerves now. Uh, it was Autodesk's philosophy to minimize mouse travel and to place the most frequently used commands around the right wherever you right click the mouse button place those commands that you would most frequently use at this point um, and make them easily accessible it's context sensitive as well so in an assembly with nothing selected I guess trends would show that people would be placing a component next or placing a constraint if with something selected Right click will then show relationships and open the command, open the, the part and you know create constraints, which is visibility on and off, that sort of stuff. Uh, in a drawing or in a part file, right click, you know, what would you do next? Well you'd make a new sketch, you know, that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's context sensitive, and that's the problem. It's context sensitive. Some commands that are I guess uh, eligible to be used in all environments, for example, the open command changes position on the marking menu depending on what context you're in and that is the primary reason in my experience why most people are turned off by this marking menu and wanted to just be away from the and out of their face and out of their lives and yeah so I don't want to create a video to show how to turn it off I want to create a video to show you how to make the most of it for you so let's just look at the problem first right we're in an assembly with nothing selected right click there is no open anywhere. I want to open a file, but it's not there. There's a problem. If I go to the browser, right click, there's open there. If I'm in the assembly and I click the part and right click, open is there. If I open a drawing, for example, and then select a view, right click, open is now down there. So that annoys people. It's as insignificant as it seems. That annoys people and I kind of get it. So. You know, I, I do kind of get where they're coming from when they use it day in and day out, all day long. Uh, and it's not really reasonable to expect people to remember the position of every single command in every single context. You know, because there's so many contexts. There's the right click of a standard part. There's the right click of a content center part. There's the right click in a drawing with nothing selected. There's the right click on a drawing view. There's a right click in a part. There's a right click on a part in a 2D sketch and a 3D sketch and so on and so on and so on. <gasps> breathe so yeah it's not it's not reasonable to, to expect people to remember it all so let's look at how to customize this what you do to customize the marking menu uh, it is officially called the marking menu by the way you might call it I don't know the sundial or the the spinny annoying thing on screen the new thing that came in that got rid of the right mouse I don't know but right click on the panel bar at the top anywhere on a button or in the gray area and select customize user commands you then go to the marking menu tab this button here, I'm just going to go there, I'm just going to throw it out there right now, that switches it off, right? It's now gone, but I'm, I'm not going to dwell on that too much, let's switch it back on. Right, so that's, that's the end of that, I'm not going to go there again. At the top, you've got the environment. Currently, we're in an assembly, so it, it detects what environment you're in. And with nothing selected, this is the marking menu you will get. You are completely free to change this as much as you want. And don't worry about doing that because if you completely screw it up, you can go down here and then reset all marking menus back to how they were as default, right? So you can bollocks it up as much as you want. It doesn't matter. You can set it back. Okay, so let's look at the assembly when nothing's selected. What would you do at this point? You're looking at these commands. Do I ever free rotate? Do I ever free move? 
Probably not. Not You'd probably have in the past, but I wouldn't say it's that common. So let's select free move. Give that a click. On the right hand side, these are all the commands that Inventor has. Everything. Right? You can then come into here, click in there, and then say, right, well, let's put the open command on here. There's four different types of open, right? Because open applies to different scenarios. You know, open the, the file open dialog box, open a part from an assembly, open a part from a view, that sort of stuff. So there's different contexts to it. This one here is open a file, well, open the Windows file open dialog box. So select free move and then just click it. You don't have to drag it, just click it and it'll replace that with the open command. Press apply, press OK, right click. We've now got, uh, no, I've had a part selected. There it is, there's open on the right click context menu now. And that's pretty much it, how you customize it. You can now do that as much as you want. Take any one of these and swap it out with something else. But like I said, bear in mind, every single context has a different marking menu. So for example, when you're in an assembly and you have uh, a standard standard component, it, this is confusing, sometimes an inventor a standard component means a nut, bolt, washer, pin, that sort of stuff, nope. In this, a standard component just means a normal part, it's the complete opposite to what it means in other parts of inventor, cheers Autodesk. So standard component selected, we've now got open, measure, constraint, etc, etc. Um, if you want to have something completely, say for example you want open to be down here because that's where it was last time, we'll go to visibility and then open and then put that there. That's different to that open, by the way. Although it's not immediately obvious here, it is. Um, but that open there is right-click and open the part. Uh, and then this one here, if we think, right, well, we don't want to open there because we've got it down here, we can say, well, you know, well, sometimes when I select a part, I uh, suppress it. Let's suppress it. Yeah. So right-click now. We've now got open and we've now got suppress, which is great. I might have selected the wrong one. But yeah, you kind of get the idea. Okay, so those are the different contexts that we have. And you're free to completely change this as much as you want. Select this top drop-down menu and you can then go to... Look at look at all the different contexts. Oh my god. Yeah, you're not really going to do it for everyone. That's why it's kind of an issue. But the most common ones, I guess, you know, drawing, part environment with, uh, you know, in a 2D sketch. That sort of stuff. So yeah, that's how you customize it and also how you switch it off but like I said not what I recommend okay what else can we do with the context menu uh, with the marking menu right well it was Autodesk's intention this is sort of just you can turn the video off now if you want because I've kind of I've covered the point of the video this is just more of a, a supplementary addition to the end of the video right when so when Inventor 2012 came out and the marking menu appeared and everyone was just like doom and gloom when I was working in, the, in an Autodesk reseller, I was obviously out doing the, you know, the pre-sale presentations, trying to sell Inventor into X, Y, and Z companies. We put a positive spin on this by saying it can make you quite productive and quite fast and slick and impressive. And you, you know what? It can. I still stand by that. So if you remember, if you can remember, where the various different options are that you tend to use on a regular basis, what you do, hold down the right mouse button and then drag the mouse in the direction of whichever command it is you want to execute and then let go of the mouse button. So if I want to create a new sketch, I will hold down the right mouse button, drag and let go, like this. New sketch. Great. Look at the cursor on screen. Whenever I select the mouse button, it goes black. So drag, let go of the mouse button, executes a new sketch. Select the plane, hold down the right mouse button. See, I want to draw a two-point rectangle. That's up at the top right, which is there create a line. So yeah, it's quite good for that. It does, however, have some annoyances. Uh, as much as good as you can sort of make yourself look, you know, create your rectangle, your finished sketch, let's extrude it. Woo, look how fast I'm going. You know, you can be quite slick at it. It does have some annoyances. You might have noticed one of them already. One of them being when you do execute some of these commands, that, that sort of sticks around on screen a bit too often. And that kind of gets in the way and just distracts you. That's an annoyance. For me, personally, I'm quite quick. You know, I don't like to hang around. I like to get things done fast, which is quite contrary to this video because it's probably a bit, bit too long already. Let's just forget about that. Let's just not mention that. But I like to do things fast. If you do this too fast, it doesn't like it. And if anyone from Autodesk is watching this, this is what I mean by that. If I execute a command on the marking menu before Invent is ready for me to do so, bizarre things start happening. Watch this. So I'm going to create a new sketch. 
I'm going to select the plane. I'm then going to execute that two point rectangle command. Watch what happens. I've not got a mouse button held down. It's just now stuck in a loop waiting for me to let go of the mouse button, although I've already let go of it. Look at the cursor. The cursor is white. It's not black. When I let go of the mouse, stop moving, that appears. So it wasn't ready for me to execute the marking menu. It's irritating. I don't want the software expecting me to slow down. And I don't want to have to wait for the software to catch up to me. But if you're not fussed about that, don't worry about it. You know, you can just do, you just take your time, just do it slow, new sketch, pick on there, wait for it to do its bit turny thing, then start the rectangle command and you'll be, you'll be absolutely fine. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the marking menus. Don't forget, right click up here, customize the user commands. The marking menu, you can change this to your heart's content. If you screw it up, restore the defaults and then you're back to where you were. Uh, if you're one of those guys that doesn't like having too much clutter on screen, you can go to the customize user commands and you can switch it from icon and text to, for example, just show the icon. So now once you do that, you'll just see pictures, whether that's tidy or not. I don't know. It's up to you. Okay, thank you very much, guys. That's it. Uh, if you like the video, please press the thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel, and stick around, and I will create some more content as and when I get around to doing it. Thank you very much, and I'll see you later on.